Greetings! Welcome to Devotionables, brief devotions for busy people. My name is David, and today we're going to be continuing our series about reading the Bible carefully. We could call this loving your neighbor in the text. That is, by seeking to understand the author's intended meaning, we love our neighbor as ourselves. Nobody wants to be taken out of context, and so when reading a biblical passage, we need to keep in mind the three expanding circles of context, the immediate context, the context the book appears in, and then the context of the canon of Scripture. In this video, we're going to look closely at John 12, 32. And I'm going to read verses 32 and 33 to help us situate Jesus' words alongside John's authorial comment. Here we go. And I, when I am lifted up from the earth, I will draw all people to myself. Now, John comments, he said this to signify what sort of death he was about to die. You may ask, how would someone misread John 12, 32? Well, I can think of two misreadings and another one that's not particularly compelling. The first misreading comes from getting the point of when I am lifted up wrong. This misreading would say that lifted up refers to people lifting Jesus up in praise and worship, um, or that it primarily points to the Father lifting Jesus up in exaltation to the heavenly throne. And while we do want to worship Jesus, and the Father certainly exalts him, Hebrews 1, 3 and 4, that doesn't seem to be John's primary point here. Rather, notice that John's comment in verse 33 says, uh, he said this in order to uh, signify what sort of death he was about to die. So lifting up passages in John are primarily about Jesus' saving death. Look also to uh, chapter 3, verse 14, 8, 28. Um, These passages are important to John, and we know that because in 1832, he says that the Jews' appeal to Pilate that Jesus would die by Roman execution took place to fulfill Jesus' statement that he must be lifted up. And so, it's clear that it's about his death. Now, let's move on to other misunderstandings. And and to do this, and the rest of our discussion, we need to focus on two key parts of that final phrase. The first part is, I will draw. And the second part we need to focus on is, all people. These can be understood in two different ways each. The phrase, I will draw, is either an effective saving, or something that is less than effective, whatever that might be. And the phrase, All people either refers to all people without exception, everybody, or all people without distinction, that means whether Jew or Greek, right, in biblical terminology. So let's let's consider the four possible combinations then of those different options. First, Jesus draws all people without exception in a less than effective way. If we understand it that way, then the argument would be that this passage describes Jesus' death as this magnetic force that lovingly woos and invites everybody that's ever existed um, to be saved. But this wooing and inviting is not effective for salvation. I think that John 12, 24 is problematic for this, uh, that a grain of wheat that falls into the ground and dies is fruitful because it suggests that Jesus' death will in fact bear fruit, not just plant seeds, as it were. Uh, John 12.20 is also a little problematic, because the all that John intends seems to be more like all kinds of people. In 12.20, it's the Greeks that come to him that make him uh, give this pronouncement in the first place. And so you see that, uh, that clarification on all. The second view would be that Jesus draws all people without exception, but in an effective way. This is universalism, because Jesus' death then draws every single person with a saving efficacy, such that all are saved. The trouble with this view is that Jesus identifies people who are not his, and this is a Johannine way of the Gospel of John to say, not saved. In 847, the Jewish leaders are not of God. In 1026, the Jewish leaders are not among Jesus' sheep. In 1837, only those who are of the truth are part of Jesus' kingdom. And so universalism is a misreading because it doesn't read the passage according to the rest of John's gospel or Jesus' words, and we could multiply the rest of scripture. While this reading does uh, understand something accurately, I think think it understands that Jesus' death is effective to save sinners. Um, It just incorrectly applies this to all people without exception in a way that John certainly doesn't. The third view. 
Jesus draws all people without distinction in a less than effective way. This would mean that Jesus' death only draws some people in a way that doesn't save them. Now, perhaps this interpretation and these interpreters would say that it's implicit that Jesus' death is a free offer of the gospel to all people, with, you know, not, not picking favorites, and that this passage doesn't teach about efficacy, so it's just not the point. And I think this view gets right that the Greeks of 1220 uh, make this all people without, ex- without distinction view promising, but this way to understand the drawing is not so compelling. The final and the fourth uh, view that I, and the view that I hold is that Jesus draws all people without distinction in an effective way. This understanding argues that Jesus' drawing saves all who are drawn, just like the Father's drawing does in 644. It's not universalism because it's all without distinction, not all without exception. Let me explain the drawing piece a little bit more. The Father's drawing in John 6:44 and the Son's drawing in John 12:32 seem to be related. These two verses uniquely in the canon of scripture contain three elements. One, uh, they both describe divine drawing. Two, they both divine drawings bring people to Jesus, and then three, both drawings are spoken about by Jesus to describe the same salvation. So this divine drawing concept also appears in Jeremiah 31.3, where God describes how he loved his people with a covenant love. And John 6.44 and 45, Jesus teaches that the Father's drawing is a drawing of the new covenant, where all covenant members, without exception, are taught of God, citing Isaiah 54.13. And then the verse after that in John 6.46 says that all who hear and learn from the Father come to Jesus. So this drawing then and 644 is necessary and effective for salvation. You may ask, how does that relate to 1232? I'm glad you asked. Uh, They seem to interlock. So while the Father's drawing in 644 is prior to and affecting believers coming to Jesus, Jesus' drawing seems to take over from there and take believers given to him by the Father, 637, and effectively bring them to be with him. Where, you ask? Well, with him in heaven where he ascends to be with the Father in the Gospel of John, who is preparing a place for believers. See chapter 14. And so Jesus' drawing secures our resurrection and presence with him to see his glory. Think of 1724, right? Father, I desire that they also would be with me to see my glory. So John 12, 32 then sounds like a fulfillment of Jesus' repeated phrase in John 6. And I will raise him up on the last day. And he says that at least four times. Therefore, brothers and sisters, I want you to be encouraged today that what the Father began by drawing you, Jesus secures so that you will be with him to see his glory. And we know from the Psalter that in his presence is fullness of joy. At his right hand are pleasures forevermore. So let's finish our devotional time with this verse from John 6, 37, which I think encapsulates our study. It reads, Everyone that the Father gives me will come to me. And whoever comes to me, I will never, ever cast out. And if you've never trusted in Jesus as your Lord and Savior, then I want you to hear those words again. Listen closely. Jesus says to you, whoever comes to me, I will never, ever cast out. Today, my friend, is a very good day to take Jesus up on that promise. 